Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Trendsetters. I'm your host, A. Rich. Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Trendsetters, episode three. I hope everybody had a great week. Productive week. I got I, I to gotta ask about everybody's week. How y'all was doing, how y'all did, productivity. I'm glad y'all made it home safe from work. I'm glad we all ready for the weekend. I know I'm ready for this NFL draft. It seems like a year away. Yeah, we getting closer, but we're not close enough. We getting closer, but we're not close enough. I'm going to keep saying that until April 26th. I reserved an off day just for the draft. I'm supposed to be working that day. I'm calling out. <laughs> it is that serious to me. I definitely got to call out and see who we're going to be selecting in the first round, whether we're going to move up, whether we're going to stay put, whether we're going to have one first round pick, two first round selections. I'm going to see what we do, how we do it. Obviously, there's a lot of hoopla going on about moving up, trading up. Should we trade up? Should we trade back? I'm going to take a little feedback this episode. I'm going to take a little feedback, get, get, get the people involved. But what should we do? How important is it for us to trade up to get our franchise quarterback? Are there any franchise quarterbacks in this NFL draft? What's your definition of a franchise quarterback? Do we have a lot of franchise quarterback in the NFL today? I don't think so. I don't think we have as much franchise quarterbacks as people think. I'm thinking, if I can count off my head, I'm thinking about eight franchise quarterbacks in the NFL today. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, Russell Wilson, you can put an ostrich next to Cam Newton, Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, uh, uh, an elite quarterback, is he a franchise quarterback? He puts up those great numbers, but he doesn't get to the postseason. He doesn't have any postseason wins to think of. We, When we look at franchise guys and big-time quarterbacks, we like to put uh, postseason wins behind that. But nevertheless, Phillip Rivers is a pretty damn good quarterback. Phillip Rivers statistically probably puts up putting up Hall of Fame numbers, but I'm going to go ahead and put an asterisk to his name as well. And Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, I, I feel he won the MVP a couple seasons ago. He didn't have as good of a season last year as he did the year before with Kyle Shanahan. But nevertheless, I have him as that, as that franchise QB type quarterback. I named eight quarterbacks out of 32 teams that have franchise quarterbacks. Now, we all go crazy about it's a quarterback league, and I feel that it, it, it is a quarterback league. I feel it's more so a quarterback league uh, today than it has been in the past, yes. But I also feel that the other positions around the quarterbacks can be just as important. Am I right? Maybe y'all maybe disagree. I uh, agree to disagree with that situation. But a lot of these quarterbacks are, that's getting paid today doesn't necessarily have the the postseason wins behind the, the money that they make. When you look at uh, uh, Joe Flacco, ever since Joe Flacco went north up to $20 million a season, Joe Flacco hasn't been the same quarterback. He hasn't been the elite quarterback like his cap number would suggest. And now Joe Flacco is eating up a lot of that cap and the Baltimore more Ravens team-wise around Joe Flacco can't become as good because he's eaten up a ton of that cap. Now, you look at uh, Matthew Stafford. A lot of people may look at Matthew Stafford. I didn't name him as part of my elite quarterbacks. A lot of people may think Matthew Stafford is amongst the elites in terms of uh, top quarterbacks in this league. He's getting paid $26.5 million a season. He's accounting for $26.5 million. When I think of a quarterback accounting for $26.5 million, you're going to have to be able to capitalize on the holes your team has because you take up so much money. And Matthew Stafford's career record is 60 and 65. We're talking about a player that's getting almost $30 million that doesn't have a, 
uh, a winning overall record. You're talking about a player before 2017 has a, a road record against winning teams is 1 in 17. 1 and 17 against winning teams on the road before the 2017 season. I mean, overall road record prior to 2017 is 5 and 48. We're talking about Matthew Stafford who's making almost 30 million dollars a season. So, when you're making that type of money and you cannot match the holes that your team has, are you an elite quarterback? Now that goes down, that trickles down to this year's NFL draft. We're all looking for the next franchise guy. We're all looking for the next elite quarterback. Who do y'all think is the elite quarterback in this draft class? We have the top six, I would think. The top six are uh, Josh Rosen, Sam Donald, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and Mason Rudolph. Are any of these guys franchise quarterbacks? Are any of these guys elite guys? Who do y'all think? I see some people really like Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph, I, I like. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a solid quarterback. Is he a franchise guy? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Mason Rudolph is a franchise guy. I like his, I like his IQ. I like his pocket presence. I like his pocket awareness. We're talking about a kid that's 6'5", 230 pounds. But he's probably one of the most, has one of the most weaker arms in the draft. And I take that into account when I think of where we play at. We are playing in Buffalo. We're playing in Buffalo in November, December. We want to play games in January. Can Mason Rudolph throw a nice enough ball to cut through them wins? Can Mason Rudolph throw a nice enough ball uh, to excel in the snow weather conditions? I don't know. I'm not sure. A lot of people like his deep ball accuracy. Me necessarily, I don't necessarily care for his deep ball. I don't like the fact that he throws a lot of floaters. He throws a lot of floaters in good weather conditions. So that concerns me when you're talking about transferring that game, them type of deep balls in the NFL where the defensive backs are faster, more physical, and they can run up under them floaters. So I like Mason Rudolph, but then again, them floaters concern me in the climates that we're going to have to play and when the time we're going to have to play. We all want to play games in January. Patrick, what's going on? What's going on? You says Rosen's, Rosen potential. Rosen potential. Hey, Rosen definitely has potential. Josh Rosen is another guy. Everybody in this draft seems to have their own little red flags, right? Josh Rosen, I think he throws the best football in this NFL draft. I think Josh Rosen has an IQ or can have that IQ of a Peyton Manning. I think that he can uh, throw receivers open. I think that he is deadly when he has time to throw the ball. But as far as improvising, as far as making things happen, when plays break down, that's where it can become a concern for Josh Rosen. Now, look at our offensive line. We excelled. The media thinks we have a top seven offensive line. But if I'm drafting Josh Rosen, I'm a little concerned with that offensive line. I'm not sure if our offensive line is good enough to protect a Josh Rosen in that pocket. He needs a clean pocket because I don't think that he can improvise to the level of these other quarterbacks in the NFL. On top of that, when you can't improvise and you have some injury concerns, he wears a knee brace. I'm not sure what the knee brace is for. I try to look up some reports. I don't see him having any issues with his knee. Nevertheless, he wears a knee brace. He has some shoulder concerns. He has some concussion concerns. So when you have all them concerns and you can't improvise, it, it scares me a little, especially with our offensive line. We got Jordan Mills. We all know how Jordan Mills is. We all know our guard situation isn't the greatest. Vladimir Dukas, uh, uh, Vladimir Dukas, Richie Incognito is getting of age now. He's 35 years old. We signed the, the center from Cincinnati, who everybody in Cincinnati is happy he's gone. <laughs> Bordine. Everybody, every Cincinnati Bengal fan I talk to is ecstatic he is no longer in Cincinnati. So that goes to show me 
that he might not be that good. <laughs> we signed Newhouse from the Oakland Raiders. He might not be that good. Oakland was thrilled to get rid of him as well. So I am concerned with drafting Josh Rosen if we don't have the offensive line to protect him. So getting down to Sam Donald. Sam Donald is, a, is an interesting prospect to me. I'm a little biased towards USC quarterbacks. You have some people that feel me. There are some people like, yo, A. Rich, I don't like to mess with USC quarterbacks either, A. Rich. I feel you on that one. You have other people that's like, hey, man, that's a lazy comparison. You can't talk about uh, a, a quarterback just because he comes from a school. But me, I just have that little bias. I have that little bias. I went through this ringer a few times, a plethora of times with Mark Sanchez, with Matt Leinard, with Rob Johnson, with Matt Barkley. I've been through this ringer with USC quarterbacks. All these quarterbacks from USC was not only supposed to go to the NFL. You see, there's a difference when you're, when you're getting drafted and when you're looked at as a top-ranked uh, quarterback. All these quarterbacks that came from USC was looked at bona fide, was looked at as bona fide first round talents. Not just draft prospects that could be drafted, bona fide first round talents. And the best talent that they got from USC is Carson Palmer. Decent career. Is he a Hall of Famer, Carson Palmer? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Decent career nevertheless. Now you go over to Sam Darnold. If you want to take out the fact that he went to USC for a minute. Sam Donald is an incredibly gifted athlete, man. We're talking about a guy, we're talk, when we talk about Josh Rosen, who is the opposite of Josh Rosen. A very gifted athlete who make things happen in the pocket. Who improvises well in the pocket. Who make things happen when, break, when things break down and things seem to go left. Sam Donald, uh, there's a lot of plays where he rises to the occasion. And make plays happen. So you have to like that attribute about Sam Donald. Me personally, I think he's more physically gifted than an actual passing quarterback. When it comes down to playing the quarterback position and your footwork and your mechanics, I, I question Sam Donald's footwork. I question Sam Donald's mechanics. I question Sam Donald's throwing motion. I question his decision making on the football field. He'll make a great play and then he'll make another play like, what the hell are you doing? What was you thinking when you threw that pass? So Sam Donald is an intriguing prospect. Me personally, I think his physical attributes is masking some of his uh, flaws as a quarterback and those turnovers can it be correctable? Is it fixable? 13 turnovers via interception, 9 turnovers lost or, um, through fumbles. Is that turnover problem correctable? Can you correct the turnover problem in the NFL? And that's the question about Sam Donald. A lot of people will say he has the clutch gene, but you have to be in that moment. You have to get into the clutch moment. To show that clutch gene in the first place. So he's an interesting prospect. But I'm not sure if I'm sold on Sam Donald. You go ahead and you look at Baker Mayfield. Patrick, what's going on? Potential Rosen Elite. I, I, I see it. I can definitely see it. If he can grow into that frame. If he can bulk up a little bit. And stay healthy. I think Josh Rosen can be the best quarterback in that draft. Moving on to Baker Mayfield. I love me some Baker, man. <laughs> I love me some Baker Mayfield. I love the fact that he loves the game. I love uh, a quarterback that has some moxie. I want my quarterback to have moxie. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like that. Hey, if you like the blue-collar quarterback, the, the militant-type quarterback, there's nothing wrong with that. Me, personally, I like some gumption. I like some moxie coming from my quarterback. Baker Mayfield... Personality-wise, he reminds me of a little personality-wise of Jeremy Shockey, the former tight end. Just that mentality, just that, that passion for the game, that love for the game that Jeremy Shockey had. I see that in a Baker Mayfield and playing the quarterback position, that, be, that can become infectious. That becomes uh, something that spreads out through the rest of the team. I think the teammates that Baker Mayfield will have... We'll love this kid. I think he's 
pinpoint accurate. I think that he throws with precision. Of course, he coming from the Big 12. There's a lot of open passing lanes. There's a lot of guys open, but I think with his accuracy, his timing, the way he throws the ball, he can still make all the throws. I think that he can be a very, very good quarterback in this NFL today. Now, the only knock on Baker Mayfield is his height, right? When people talk about Baker, Baker, Baker Mayfield, that's the only concern that you could have. He's about six foot and, and, and a quarter, six foot and five eighths. We don't know if that can become a problem to Baker Mayfield or he can be a Russell Wilson and excel. Russell Wilson is shorter than Baker Mayfield. Uh, you have Drew Brees. I can see some comparisons between Drew Brees and Baker Mayfield. Of course, Drew Brees' footwork is phenomenal. Baker Mayfield is definitely not there yet. Drew Brees' mechanics, Drew Brees' footwork is phenomenal. And with work, with a good work ethic, with good coaching behind him, I believe Baker, May Baker Mayfield can develop uh, that type of footwork and excel in this NFL today. That is my favorite quarterback in the draft. Baker Mayfield is my favorite quarterback in this NFL draft. I would love for the Buffalo Bills to get him. I have Josh Rosen number one on my chart, but I'm in love <laughs> with Baker Mayfield and what he and what he possesses and what he can possibly do uh, and uplift a team. Austin, what's going on? Besides arm strength, I love that guy. So I guess it comes down to coachability. Everything comes down to coachability. That, that's, that's exactly right. And, and coaching ability, uh, I have to talk about the next guy on the list, and that's Josh Allen, right? You turn on the film with Josh Allen. You look at the kid. He's a big kid, 6'5", big kid, 230-plus pounds. He can run. He can escape the pocket. I believe Daniel Jeremiah called him the white version of Cam Newton. And I definitely can see them comparisons between Josh Allen and Cam Newton. And Josh Allen definitely, in my opinion, has the highest ceiling in this NFL draft. We're talking about a guy that can throw 70, 80 yards on a rope. We're talking about a guy that can make the throws and wow you with some of the throws he makes. And he could wow you in terms of when the, when the pocket breaks down and making things happen. But when I turn on the film, certain things I just can't ignore. I don't know if accuracy can be taught. Can With better footwork, can you get uh, become a more accurate passer? With Josh Allen, he's a 57% completion percentage guy. 57%. I, it's hard for me to escape that. Now, what is that? We talk about coaching ability. Was that the coaching from Wyoming? I see a lot of their a lot of their plays, a lot of their passing plays was predicated off the deep pass. Was predicated off going deep. Josh Allen throwing the ball down the field, making things happen. Now in the NFL. You're not going to throw that many deep passes as he did in Wyoming. Can that help his completion percentage? Can the right offensive coordinator come in with the, with the right intermediate passing game and implement some screen games in there and make Josh Allen a better passer? You saw Pierre. Shout out Pierre. He was on with his fanatics talk talking about he like his quarterbacks to play right away in terms of should a quarterback, should a rookie quarterback start or sit. But Josh Allen, in my opinion, he may need to sit a year or two. He's one of those guys that may need to sit, may need to learn the position, may need to learn how to, how to, uh, how to practice with his mechanics, learn how to break down film, learn how to properly, properly read defenses before he steps out on the field. Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo sat for four years. We played Jimmy Garoppolo in 2014, the Buffalo Bills. We beat uh, Jimmy Garoppolo at the end of that season. He improved immensely since that time, Jimmy Garoppolo. So there's a lot of players that's, that was able to sit and got better because they sat. And I think Josh Allen is definitely one of those guys. I'm not sure if Buffalo can afford to wait that long. Is A.J. McCarron that good? We don't know who A.J. McCarron is. Is he a bridge? Is he a backup? We don't know. A lot of people think he's a backup. A lot of people would tell you, if you can't beat out Andy Dalton, 
you probably you are probably a backup in this NFL. But I would say this: we don't know the situation that the Cincinnati Bengals had. I don't know the type of coach, the type of philosophy that ownership that ownership and that coaching staff had. When you pay Andy Dalton a hundred million dollars, another quarterback. When you pay Andy Dalton a hundred million dollars, do you want to sit your hundred and hundred million dollar quarterback? So it might be torn between those two things in Cincinnati as in why A.J. McCarron didn't get that shot. But do Josh Allen have enough to come start right away and, and play in Foxborough game one after his season in Wyoming? I don't think so. I think he needs to sit. I think he needs to, to, needs to practice on his mechanics and footwork before he steps out on that field. We'll see what happens with Josh Allen. Getting back to another guy. Lamar Jackson, that's Rico's boy, <laughs> LJ Lamar Jackson, Louisville, Louisville quarterback. I think he's a he's a special talent, Lamar Jackson, right? We're talking about a guy that can win with his arm and win with his legs. I'm not sure if he'll ever be an accurate quarterback. Let's just call a spade a spade. He's never going to be a 65, 66, 67 percent completion percentage quarterback but with the right system can Lamar Jackson excel we're talking about physical traits and physical gifts Lamar Jackson have that no quarterback in this NFL has we're not we're talking about a guy Lamar Jackson with these gifts that nobody had since probably a Michael Giff um, a Michael Vick excuse me so with the right system around him with the right coordinator around him is Lamar Jackson an intriguing prospect who would you rather have at pick 22? Would you rather have a Mason Rudolph or would you rather have a Lamar Jackson? And that's when I think about that question, that's the options I weigh. I think those two pro uh, quarterback prospects can possibly be there at 22, definitely at 12, possibly at 22 if we don't get the trade up. So we definitely want to see what happens there. But as far as the six quarterbacks in this NFL draft, the top six, Everybody's not going to be elite. Everybody's not going to pound out. There are going to be possibly three to four bust out those quarterbacks in this NFL draft. Whoever we pick, I'm just hoping we hit on the guy that we pick. That's all that matters. Whether it's Sam Darnold or Josh Allen or Baker Mayfield, I'm just hoping that we hit. Now, we want to talk about quarterbacks and franchise quarterbacks. Look what happened in the playoffs. Just look what happened in the playoffs alone. We're talking about Nick Foles and Case Keenum and Blake Bortles starting games and winning games. And being the fact they're not, they're not getting paid. Those quarterbacks wasn't getting paid north of $20 million because eventually you're going to have to pay a franchise quarterback if he's that franchise guy, right? But eventually, if your quarterback is an above average quarterback, he's going to get paid tons of money but the question is when you paying a quarterback tons of money he may be good but is he good enough to match the holes that you're going to have because our quarterback is getting paid tons of money and I'm not sure with that situation you know I, I talked about Matthew Stafford and what the Detroit Lions is going through Joe Flacco he's going through his his uh his ups and downs, the team is going through their ups and downs. John Harbaugh's job has been in question because of the Baltimore Ravens' ups and downs. And it's not really John Harbaugh's fault. The, the fact of the matter is Baltimore Ravens paid a quarterback elite money and he's not elite. And that affects the rest of the team. Now you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They don't have an elite quarterback. They're not paying an elite quarterback, uh, a quarterback up north of $20 million. So when you're not paying a quarterback up north of $20 million, what can you do? You can afford to go get a Jalen Ramsey. You can afford to go get a Tevin Smith. You can afford to go trade for a, Mar a Marcel Darius and implement a very, very talented roster around Blake Bortles, and that Jacksonville Jaguars squad. Take a look at the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots and Tom Brady is probably the smartest bunch in football. Tom Brady never sniffed $20 million. Tom Brady always hovered around $17 and $18 million a year. So when you hover in around $17 and $18 million a year, what can you do? You can afford to take all the Buffalo Bills players and pay them 
uh, top money. You can pay a Mike Gillisley more than you can pay, more than Buffalo can pay a Mike Gillisley. Even Buffalo, even, even Buffalo don't have a franchise quarterback, but their contracts were so bad, the New England Patriots with a franchise quarterback can't afford to pay Mike Gillisley. They can afford to pay Stephon Gilmore $50 million. They can afford to pay Gronkowski. Big money, right? Because that organization and that quarterback has came into uh and came into the agreements that you need money. you need certain cap flexibility to win around the quarterback. So I gotta salute what Tom Brady, what the New England Patriots can afford to do with that situation. And you would I would think if if it's a copycat league. Why aren't we copying what's going on today in terms of quarterbacks? We seen what's, what was going on. We seen Nick Foles win the Super Bowl. We seen Ke uh, Case Keenum in the NFC Championship. We seen Blake Bortles in the NFC Championship. If it's a copycat league, will the rest of the teams follow suit? Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings got to the NFC Championship with Case Keenum and their $18 million quarterback, Sam Bradford, on the bench. Imagine if the Minnesota Vikings didn't have Sam Bradford and they had that $18 million. Imagine how much better they would have been with $18 million extra dollars. Now, the Vikings is a special case. They went ahead. They must have hit on all their draft picks, and they hit on a multitude of guys. Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs get, gets paid a combined $5.2 million. Their offensive line is amongst the least paid in the NFL. Their defensive line is amongst the least paid in the NFL. And they went and they must have hit on a multitude of draft picks. They got one of the best cornerbacks in Xavier Rhodes. They got a, a very good safety that they paid early in in uh in Harrison and they was able to make things happen but imagine how much better they could have got with 18 million extra dollars they went the route of signing the Kirk Cousins I probably would have signed Case Keenum for the 18 million dollars replacing Sam Bradford's 18 million dollars and continue building around Case Keenum there was one game away from the championship we have a bunch of quarterbacks that's getting paid $20 million a season with no postseason wins. You have uh, John, uh, Joe Flacco, ever since he got paid, he's disappeared. You have Matt, Matthew Stafford, who's getting paid almost $30 million, no postseason wins. You have uh, Ryan Tannehill, who's getting over $100 million. You, get, you have Andy Dalton, who's getting paid over $100 million. Since Andy Dalton got paid, what's had to happen? You had to lose Muhammad Sanu. You had to lose certain play, certain wide receivers, certain playmakers. So that's why they had to go out and reach on a John Ross on last year's draft. That's why they had to go out and reach on certain guys. Because when you pay Andy Dalton elite money, but he can't mask your holes like a real elite quarterback, you tend to have problems. And that's when coaches get fired and general managers get fired. When the reality is you're overpaying quarterbacks that can't mask the positions and the holes you need to fill. And that's the problem with a lot of teams in the NFL today and the coaches are getting bulk of the blame for it. But that's just how I feel about the quarterbacks in this situation. That's just how I feel about franchise quarterbacks. Are franchise quarterbacks becoming extinct? Austin, what's going on? How you? What's going on, Austin? Sammy, big hands, big body, hell of an arm. Shell Holloman, what's going on? Man, we got to talk about our wide receivers. Hey, that's another story. Our wide receivers, how good does it matter our wide receivers are if we don't have the quarterback in place yet? Do we have that quarterback in place? Do we have that franchise quarterback in place to really talk about receivers? Or do we need high quality receivers to make our quarterback look good? It all depends on how you feel with that situation. Yes, yes, Austin. Bye-bye, EJ Gaines. EJ Gaines, I seen him visit the New York Jets. The New York Jets is a team that we have to look out for, man. I'm a little, I'm a little worried about the New York Jets. They jumped us to number three. They signed uh, Tremaine Johnson. They have the two safeties. They signed Terrell Pryor. They still have a boatload of money. They're probably going to try to get their franchise quarterback with a third overall pick. We definitely have to watch 
Our competitors, the New York Jets, on the rise. I'm going to definitely have to next week get into the rest of the AFC East transactions. Who better themselves? Who, who worsen themselves? Miami Dolphins, New England Patriots, New York Jets. We're definitely going to get into that next week. I'm going to take some questions before I get out here. If I get out of here, if I've seen anything I missed, I'll try to answer it right quick before I get out of here. Brian, we don't need a QB. We already have two. I'm sure they will get the job done if they build the offense Offensive line around him. Hey, Brian, that's an interesting take. I'm not sure yet. I'm not handing no jobs. AJ McCarron hasn't shown me enough. Nate Peterman definitely hasn't shown me enough to warrant giving any of these any of these guys starting jobs. They haven't shown me enough to to not want to pick a quarterback in this NFL draft. So I may have to disagree with you on that. I do I do feel that this. That this franchise elite quarterback, you you have to have this elite. You don't have to have a, 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 a elite quarterback. It will be nice. All 32 teams would love an elite quarterback. But if you can have an above average quarterback and you can, you can pay him a decent amount of money where you can build around the rest of the team, that can definitely get it done. We've seen it happen. Lamar Jackson at 12, Dave. We're gonna see, man. I don't think I don't think Lamar Jackson would be a pick at 12. I think Lamar Jackson would definitely be a reach at 12. 22 if he's there. If we keep our picks, if he's there at 22, possible. That's possible. I, I see Lamar Jackson in that range. It all depends on how much quarterbacks fall in the top 10. It all depends on how much quarterbacks fall before we get to our pick. You think at 22 we can hit on a quarterback and maybe linebacker from Boise State? Reminds me of Keekly. I like Van Der Esch a lot. I really took two linebackers I love. Tremaine Edwin, Ed, uh, Edmonds from Virginia Tech and Van Der Esch from Boise State. I really love those two linebackers. I have those two linebackers as my one, two top linebackers, top NFL prospects and amongst the linebackers in the draft, Raekwon Smith is third. I know he's the award winner, but he's a little shorter in stature. I like the physical ability. I like the size and strength of Edmonds and Van Der Esch. I like their speed. I want to get bigger on defense. So those two linebackers would definitely make us bigger. And I would love one of those linebackers. I would really love one of those linebackers. Rudolph at 22. Rudolph at 22 is definitely a possibility. I would not reach for Rudolph at 12, me personally, but I'm hearing a lot of a lot of sources saying that the Buffalo Bills brass really like Mason Rudolph. So if, if a Baker Mayfield and a Josh Allen and a Josh Rosen and a Sam Donald is gone in the top 10, you may have to go get Mason Rudolph if that's your guy that you want. You may have to pull that trigger at 12 based on where the other quarterbacks get drafted. Cody, what's going on? Patrick, I, I agree with you about USC guys. Hey, man, that's just, that's just my feel. A lot of people will say that's a lazy argument <laughs> with USC guys. But I can name five or six quarterbacks that prove my argument. I can name five or six quarterbacks that prove my case. I'm at the point with the USC quarterback is you're going to have to show me now. Unless you have this all-world season, unless you have this all-world Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning type college season, you're going to have to show me. I'm just going to have to miss on you and I'm going to have to regret it later because me personally, I'm not sold on USC quarterbacks and the play of, of Sam Donald to me is a little worrisome. I think he's more physically gifted than anything else. I question his mechanics. I question his decision making. A lot of people love him. A lot of people love him. So it all depends on who you talk to. I'm. Uh, that's how I feel. If we was to select a, uh, a Sam Donald, I wouldn't be mad as long as he proves me wrong. If Sam Donald gets selected by the Buffalo Bills, he proves me wrong. I don't have no problem apologizing. I don't have no problem be like, you know what? I was wrong with Sam Donald. I have no problem with that if he proves to be our franchise quarterback. If he's not the franchise guy on our team or the team that selects him, it's going to be a lot of I told you so <laughs> coming from my mouth. So we're definitely going to see. So USC quarterback QBs don't last. Hey, I got some supporters with the USC thing. I definitely got some supporters. Tim, thoughts on Mayfield. Here's my guy. Again, I spoke on Mayfield a little bit. I think... 
He's my favorite quarterback in the draft, Baker Mayfield. He's accurate. I love his I love his attitude. I love his moxie. I know he did some things off the field in the past. I think with maturity, he will grow from that. And he's uh, you talk about lazy arguments. The, the Johnny Manziel argument, the Johnny Manziel comparison, in my opinion, is a lazy argument. More so than Sam Donald, the USC quarterbacks. Comparing Baker Mayfield to Johnny Manziel is a lazy argument, in my opinion. I'm going to leave that at that. Shell, what's going on? Donald Weapons made him look good. He's not that good. Hey, when you have Juju Smith and you have certain guys on that offensive line, again, I spoke about the NFL overpaying for, for good quarterbacks, but not elite quarterbacks. Elite quarterbacks in the NFL, ja, uh, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, before he got there, the Colts was 1-15. in Andrew Luck didn't have no O-line to speak of. Andrew Luck didn't have no defense to speak of. Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck didn't have nothing elite around him to speak of. He had a good receiver or two. But Andrew Luck, general, general manager was below average. Andrew Luck didn't have anything elite, anything good around him to speak of. And yet he turned a 1-15 team to a playoff team the very next season. That's an elite quarterback. When you have these other guys like Matthew Stafford getting paid tons of money, they're good quarterbacks. But they're not elite because they cannot mask the holes that they have when they're getting paid. When you're getting paid elite money, you have to be able to mask the deficiencies your team has. And Matthew Stafford and Andy Dalton and Joe Flacco, they cannot do that. Now, Sam Donald looked very good with USC Trojans when he had NFL talent around him. As soon as that NFL talent left, he didn't look like the same player. Again, when I'm thinking of an elite quarterback, you have to be able to mask, mask the deficiencies you do not have. You have to be able to mask the holes and the deficiencies you have on that roster. And Sam Donald struggled to do that at, at USC. Can he grow from that? Can he learn from that and possibly do that in the NFL? Who knows? But at USC, when his talent dipped, his play dipped. So in my opinion, that's no different than Matthew Stafford. That's no different than Andy Dalton. That's no different than Joe Flacco. So we definitely going to see what happens and where Sam Donald goes in that draft. Brian, what's going on? College QB are not fast enough in the NFL. They all need to sit behind a vet for a year or two, at least in my opinion. Hey, Brian, I'm in agreement with you. So for the most part, there's some quarterbacks that you could throw out there right away. Carson Wentz was an example. They made that trade for Sam Bradford. They got some, a situation that wild them, picks that wild them, and they made that move. But in my opinion, there's a lot of quarterbacks. Uh, even Sam Donald, quarterback coach, coach. Uh, Carson Palmer brother, I believe is Chris Palmer. He was on there on NFL Network talking about Sam Donald and him himself was saying he believes quarterbacks should sit a year. Rookie quarterbacks should sit a year to learn the game, to learn the speed of the game, to process the game, to work on footing and mechanics and, and things of that nature. So there's a lot of people that do agree with us, but there's a lot of people that feel, hey, you need to throw them to the fire as well. Cliff, Allen is the best QB in the draft. Uh, Josh Allen, the best QB, we're going to see. I believe Josh Allen has a has the highest ceiling amongst QBs. I just I, I don't know if he's the best QB in the draft. He has the highest ceiling. Can he bring out? Can he bring his ceiling to the forefront? Can he bring all that talent out? Can an NFL organization, can an NFL coach bring all that ability out of Josh Allen? Is is yet to be seen. But he has that capability, and there's definitely NFL coaches, stubborn NFL coaches that's going to be like, you know what? I can get the most out of that guy. There are certain things you cannot teach that Josh Allen has. Everything else is correctable. I can get the most out of that guy. I'm going to go get that guy. So we definitely going to see. Patrick, if Baker lasts to 12, I'm good with that all day. If Baker, if Baker Mayfield lasts, that's what I'm hoping, Patrick. I'm hoping Baker Mayfield can last to 12. I'm hoping there's NFL court, NFL teams that that think him running from the cops a couple years ago, I, I, I hope they look at it as a red flag. Maybe he can have a a, a Jeremy a Tunzil situation where we, he can have a gas mask on right before the draft <laughs> and he can drop 
Who knows? If he lasted 12, man, that would be that would be awesome. Baker personality wise is a QB of Phillip Rivers. Hey, Phillip Rivers, I like Phillip Rivers Moxie. Again, we're talking about a guy that's a real good quarterback that doesn't seem to make the playoffs. So it's he's a, an anomaly to me, Phillip Rivers. Fatty, what's going on? Baker, that dude, brings that fire. If you sit Allen a couple years, yeah, man. Sharif, what's going on? Josh Allen, again, highest, highest in the ceiling. Get Rosen Allen Mayfield in the Bills jersey. I wouldn't be mad at either, either of them picks. Josh Allen, I'm concerned with his accuracy issues. I'm concerned with that 57% completion percentage. But when I turn on the tape, a lot of that is deep passes. I don't see any short to intermediate passes in that offensive scheme he ran in Wyoming. So maybe with the proper coaching and the proper scheme, the proper playbook, who knows? Josh Allen could be that guy. Cody, I have a feeling McCarron is going to be the next girl, the girl next door. Maybe wasn't attractive when you was growing up, but look at me now all grown up and running my own football team. AJ McCarron, a lot of people, a lot of people, and again, I'm just, my podcast, A Rich, Akeem Richards, welcome to Trendsetters. I don't usually, usually take and talk to uh, uh, the base as much on my podcast, but I feel my third episode in, I could communicate, I could converse, take some Q&As right quick. Uh, Cody, who knows? A lot of people think that he's a backup because he couldn't beat out Andy Dalton. I personally think that Andy Dalton was too much of an investment to put on the bench. And that's why the Cincinnati uh, organization uh, ran it like that. But he's definitely going to get his opportunity now. And we shall see. Had to, had, had to have no chance in Cincy. Dalton was a Lewis guy. I feel the same way. Cliff, McCarron had better stats coming out of college than... Now, all this year's prospects. Uh, college stats could be, we, we already know how college stats could wind up. Big 12 quarterbacks put up monster stats. Um, Br Bryce Petty put out monster stats out of Baylor coming out before he got drafted. And we see where he's at now. So, we're definitely going to see. He's either he's either R3, RG3 or Watson, boom or bust. Hey, Deshaun Watson. I really like Deshaun Watson. <clears throat> I really like what he did. I feel that he has a clutch gene. He showed that clutch gene against Alabama Crimson Tide, but I'm not going to I'm not going to crown Deshaun Watson as elite yet. I know a lot of people are excited because of what he did in six games before he tore his ACL. I'm not going to crown him yet because it's only been six games. <laughs> it's only been six games. We've seen quarterbacks before go on a run and then slow down and and get the defensive coordinators and defensive coaches get film on them and they have to adjust. And some quarterbacks, the good quarterbacks adjust, other quarterbacks don't. So while I do like Deshaun Watson a lot, I am definitely not going to crown him as of yet. Same thing with Jimmy Garoppolo. I like Jimmy Garoppolo a lot. <clears throat> I like what he was able to do, but I'm not going to crown him as yet neither. Hell yeah, don't care who it is, just hope he's great. Exactly, man, exactly. We all have opinions, we all feel who we feel can be the next guy, but at the end of the day, we should all want our quarterback, whoever's drafted, to be successful. That's what it's all about. Let's let that Maybe we didn't like that quarterback that we drafted and he could come out and prove us wrong. We just want a franchise guy. We want a guy that can come in and excel for our team, the Buffalo Bills. It's been a long time since we got above average quarterback play. I'm going to throw elite quarterback play out of it. Don, what's going on, Don? I'm going to throw elite quarterback play out of it. It's been a long time since we've, got, we've gotten above average quarterback play, and that's all I'm looking for because, in my opinion, franchise quarterbacks are becoming a few and far in between nowadays. There are not a lot of franchise quarterbacks. There are a lot of quarterbacks that get chosen number one overall, but there are not a lot of franchise quarterbacks in this NFL today. I don't think James Winston is a franchise quarterback. I don't think Marcus Mariota is a franchise quarterback. It's still up in the air on David Carr. I'm going to see. Fran David Carr looked like a franchise quarterback before he broke his leg. He came back from his broken leg last year. I'm not sure anymore. We're going to see what happens with David Carr. Uh, so... There's a lot of guys that are selected high and don't turn out to be franchise guys. So we're going to see what's going to happen, man. we definitely going to see. Gerald, what's going on? But again, this has been Trendsetters. I'm your boy, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. I had to touch on the quarterbacks. Next week, I'm going to dive into the rest of the AFC East. Who possibly got better? Who possibly got worse? Who is going to give us trouble? Who we got to look out for in our own division? A. Rich, Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me. Until next time.